Hi everybody, welcome back for another episode of On the Road with the Fish Guy. I am Jay the Fish Guy, thanks for joining us. Uh, right off the bat, I'd like to say thank you real quick. Uh, over the past couple of days, our subscriber numbers have pretty much doubled, which, I mean, isn't saying much. We're still new, so that puts us around 35 subscribers. But hey, for me, that's huge. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys subscribing. Um, also, I'd like to do a quick shameless plug to uh, CJ's Aquariums uh, channel here on YouTube. It was actually because of him yesterday during his live stream that so many of you found your way over to me. Uh, for that, I'd like to say thank you, and uh, check his uh up there? Yeah, probably here, there, one of them. Anyway, I'll put his channel up here somewhere. Uh, check it out. He's got a lot of good videos on there. So without further ado, today's episode. Today we're talking about flow in our reef aquariums. Okay, so that's a debatable topic. I, I know I say that a lot, uh, you know, but it, it is. It depends on what type of power heads you're using, uh, whether they're the standard uh, jet power heads, the older school ones, not too many people still use those, but still applicable because somebody might. So whether you're using something like a maxi jet with just a nozzle, uh, whether you're doing things like Coralias, which uh, brings you over to a prop pump, um, all different brands of those now. You got the Jebo Wave Makers, you got Vortex, you got the Gyre Pumps. So there's a lot of options out there these days for flow. And everybody says, well, how many, how many gallons per hour? How big should I use? Well, okay, now here's another good question. What do you have for corals? Because that dictates a lot as far as how much flow they can either handle or how much they actually like. Um, SPS corals are obviously probably the most demanding in terms of flow. They really like a lot, but that comes with a caveat. If you are blasting them literally right in front of your power head, you're going to blow the tissue right off. It doesn't matter how high flow friendly corals are, don't overdo it. LPS are probably the worst when it comes to this because you can actually blow the tissue right off the skeleton. The worst by far are probably hammers, torches, any of the euphilia species. Uh, definitely don't want to hit them with too much flow. So, how, how to make all this into a short answer? Okay, well, I don't like using a straight up gallon per hour rule for a size of tank or a type of coral. I'm sorry, I, I don't have that answer for you. But, start slow. You know, obviously when you start your tank, I apologize, it's a nasty road today, so bear with me. Frost heaves in New England, gotta love it. So anyway, sorry. Uh, it depends on your types of corals. So if you're just starting out the tank, I may actually have to stop and come back to this because this is a particularly bad section of road. So bear with me here, hold on. All right guys, I'm back, sorry about that. All right, so uh, your tank, you probably won't be starting off with corals. Obviously everybody needs to cycle their tank, get the rock in there, get some fish in there. So it's during that period of time that you should really watch the tank. Get a couple of power heads. I do recommend any of the prop style power heads. It doesn't have to be a wave maker. Those could come later if you wanted, and if you're on a budget, hey, a, a Coralia or something similar, just a standard speed power head, those are still great power heads. But the prop ones, you can move a lot more water over a much more dispersed area, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get all the water moving and circulating around and try to get as much flow in there as possible without irritating the corals and without blowing the sand all around so it looks like a snow globe. So try a couple of power heads or even just one and while you have your rock in there and some fish in there and you're feeding and you're doing a little maintenance on this tank, you know, kind of see how everything's working out. Do you have pockets in the tank where food is collecting or waste is collecting and it's like a little pit in the corner where everything just kind of settles? Um, can you move rocks around and you have massive amounts of detritus or algaes that just kind of fluff right off as soon as you move the rock? You know, those are indications that you don't have enough flow in the tank. You know, if you can point the power head at the rock and everything just goes Puh, and you've got a shit storm in the tank, sorry, excuse my language. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you got stuff just going everywhere in the tank, uh, odds are you don't have enough flow. So, again, everybody's tank is unique. Even just simply how you have the rock set up 
can dictate whether you need one power head, two power heads, the bigger size of power head, how long the tank is, you know, everything goes into play. So I don't like to be put into a cookie cutter mold of, oh, you have a 75 gallon tank, you need 3,000 gallons per hour of power heads. It, it's just not right. Because again, the brands of power heads are all slightly different. One, one brand's 2,000 gallon per hour may not be the other brand's 2,000 gallon per hour. So it, it, it's tough, and I understand that, and I apologize, I just don't simply have an answer for you, but that's, that's not how this hobby works. And especially with reef tanks is every tank is unique. So, so with that, we're going to call it a wrap for today. Uh, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Thanks for subscribing, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.